Hey guys, what's going on? It's Ben here, and today I'm back again doing another video. And the subject of today's video is going to be me ranking all NBA champions since the year 2000. That's the past 20 seasons. I'm going to be ranking the champs from who I think was the least impressive champion to the most impressive champion. This is primarily going to be based on who was on the team, how well they performed in the playoffs, and who they had to face in the playoffs. So without further ado, let's get into it. So I think the least impressive champion from the last 20 years was the 2003 Spurs. Um, and, you know, for any of these, you might initially look at them and say, like, why do you have them down there? It's not that I think that these teams are bad in any way. It's that there's just a lot of good teams. And when everybody's a champion, somebody's got to be at the bottom. So I have the 03 Spurs. Um, they just faced a weaker team in the finals than most of the people. They faced the 03 Nets. And... The Nets were basically a pretty bad team to have made the finals, so I think the Spurs got off pretty easy facing them. And this team's cast of players was not that good. You had uh, uh, David Robinson on the fringe of retirement. You had Manu Ginobili and Tony Parker, who at this point were no more than uh, bench role players. You had Duncan, who was great, but nobody else that really stood out besides him and a decent Steven Jackson, who was averaging like 13 points per game. Um, next, I have the 2006 Heat, a team that a lot of people see as a team that maybe shouldn't have even won the finals, but got a lot of help from referees. Um, I think that the Heat were probably one of those teams where you can look at them and say, man, let's say that they and the Mavs that year play like um, an 11 game series. I don't know if the Heat win that, but because they got a seven-game series, I see that they won it. But, you know, like, if that series was played to first to get six or seven wins, like uh, best of 11 or best of 13 even, I don't know that the Heat win that. I feel like they just caught everything right at the right time as they won those four games back to back to back to back. Um, so... I just feel like they were kind of like they got hot at the right time, which is, you know, perfectly valid. But I feel like um, they were a streaky team and they just happened to be hot like while the finals was going, which you can't discount too much. But I feel like uh, they got a lot of help from the refs, too. Uh, OK, so next I have the 2019 Toronto Raptors. I have them really low because when they faced the Warriors and won, the Warriors were um, handicapped in that they didn't have Durant for the basically the whole series, and they missed Clay for about half the series, and even Boogie was a little hobbled during this series. Um, so because of that, I have the Raptors pretty low here, and then also they didn't have to face LeBron at all in the East because he had left that year, so they got a little bit of an easier road than most um, most teams would have typically if the Warriors would have been healthy and if LeBron would have been in the East. Next, I have the 2015 Warriors, who might feel really low here. But again, a team that got a lot of easy breaks if you look at their road to a championship. I actually considered doing a whole video on this. I might still do it. But to briefly sum up, um, in the first round, they faced the Pelicans, who uh, basically were a one-dimensional team around Anthony Davis. They benefited in that Durant was out that entire season, so they didn't have to f have him in the playoffs at all. The Thunder, who are uh, arguably a much tougher out, had a tied record with the Pelicans, and the Pelicans had the tiebreakers. So the Thunder, with Westbrook and the rest of the supporting cast, didn't even make the playoffs, so they caught a break there. Uh, in the second round, Mike Conley was injured for most of that series against the Grizzlies. Warriors won in six, but again... Mike Conley was injured for most of the series, and even in the games where he played, Tony Allen, who was the Grizzlies' best defender, was out. So they got a lot of injury help there. They faced the Rockets in the Western Conference Finals, who really shouldn't have even been there. If not for the Clippers' collapse in the second round, the Rockets went to been there. The Rockets are one of the worst teams to ever make a Western Conference Finals. I am a huge Rockets fan, but even still, um, that team was James Harden, a hobbled, injury-riddled Dwight Howard that season, and really nothing else. They had Jeremy Lin. They had um, their starting lineup featured a 38-year-old Jason Terry, and any time that that is part of your starting lineup, you're going to struggle. Um, 
so they got a break there. And then in the finals, Kevin Love and Kyrie were injured. So um, to me, th- that Warriors team got a lot of big breaks. Uh, 2011 Mavericks are next. Another team where a really impressive run, actually. They faced a great set of teams leading up to the finals. They beat the two-time reigning champion Lakers, and they beat the up-and-coming Thunder with Harden, Westbrook, and Durant. But in the finals, I think a lot of people remember it this way. I don't necessarily, but a lot of people see this finals as one that the Heat lost rather than the Mavericks won. A lot of people, you know, will think if LeBron didn't do the ultimate choke job, the Heat would have won this series. And it's really more because of the Heat failing rather than the Mavericks succeeding. Uh, It's all about perspective and context, but I think if you win the NBA title, you're the champion and nobody can take that away from you. So... I think that the Mavs earned it, and they played just as good a defense as LeBron did choke. So I think that they should still get some credit. But just because there was a choke factor in there, I'm ranking a little bit lower. But they did did get through some pretty tough teams to get there. And it was definitely like the Cinderella story as far as NBA titles go. Along with this next one, which is the 2004 Detroit Pistons. They beat a much better team in the... Eastern Conference Finals record-wise they beat the 61 win Pacers when they only had 54 wins and then in the the finals they beat the Kobe, Shaq, Carl Malone, Gary Payton, Lakers who were heavily favored. Uh, Another asterisk though that I'll put on this one and not a huge one but a little one is that um, Carl Malone was out for like almost all of that NBA Finals and if you don't know the Lakers in that 2004 season actually ran a heavy amount of their offense through Carl Malone and what I mean by that is not that he was scoring a ton of points but he was like um he was the one running the high post stuff that Pau Gasol did later on with the triangle so like a lot flowed through him even though it wasn't like he was averaging 10 assists a game or scoring 30 points a game, but he was a key cog in a lot of their offense getting set up properly. So without him, they had to do a lot of a lot more like ISO plays, and so they became a lot more heavily reliant on Kobe. Detroit had great perimeter defense, so they did shut that down pretty well. Um, but they just they limited the options of the Lakers, but also like Malone being out was a way bigger factor in that finals than people remember it as being. Uh, 2005 Spurs, I had to rank them above the 04 Pistons because the Spurs beat the Pistons in 05 in the finals, so I put the Spurs here. But again, a team where they won the finals, but if not for Robert Ory sinking the clutches of clutch shots and Rashid Wallace, uh, if you don't know, Robert Ory made a game-winning shot in Game 5 of that finals where the Spurs were down two with like five seconds left and Rashid Wallace decided to double team the inbounder rather wait no here's what it was Rashid Wallace double teamed I believe um, Tony Parker and they inbounded it to Ginobili and so then Robert Ori as the inbounder was unguarded Ginobili flipped it back to him really quick right by the sideline and he drained a three an open three-point shot and he's a great three-point shooter so Basically, if Rashid Wallace just guards who he's supposed to be guarding, uh, Robert Ory probably misses that shot, and the Spurs go down 3-2, to two, and Detroit won Game 6 in a blowout. So you don't know exactly how it would turn out, but Detroit would have probably had a pretty good shot of winning Game 6 at home. So if not for a very fortunate last play of Game 5, the Spurs probably don't win that title. So I have them a little bit lower here because of that. Uh, 2007 Spurs are next. Again, I have them a little bit lower because they faced really weak competition from the Cavs in the East who beat a Detroit team who they probably shouldn't have beaten in the first place. They also benefited from the Miami Heat going through huge injury problems this year, so they didn't have a chance to get back to the finals to defend their title. So that's a huge contender that's taken out early. They also benefited from the one-seeded Mavericks, um getting knocked out in the first round. So that's a huge contender that they didn't have to face at all in the playoffs. And then they also got a huge benefit in that um, the the Suns had all these suspensions that went down because they had, after this hip check that happened in the semifinals against the Suns, um, 
Amari Stoudemire and Boris Diaw like stepped out on the court to say like, hey, what are you doing roughing up Steve Nash? And the NBA suspended them for like a critical game five when the series was tied two to two. And so then the Spurs went on to win that game and then they won game six by like two points. So again, a series where the Spurs got a pretty huge break and the NBA was being very nitpicky. And then besides that, they got some huge breaks as far as uh, key contenders being knocked out super early in the playoffs due to one reason or another. But this is like the team where you had Duncan, uh, Parker, and Ginobili basically all in some stage of their prime. So even if those contenders were around, I could have seen the Spurs team still being the NBA champs. Next, I have the 0-2 Lakers, a team that lacked depth as much as some of these, the other early 2000s Lakers teams. Um, the other early 2000s Lakers teams had more scoring options than these Lakers. They just had Kobe and Shaq, really. Um and they just they just weren't as they didn't pop as much as before. I'd say they faced uh they faced a similar level of opponent in the finals as the year before the Nets to the um seventy sixers. Again, they're a little bit lower on this list because they faced the Nets who they were pretty easily sweeping. Um the Nets had like Todd McCullough guarding Shaq, who was like uh it's like when you play one on one with like your three year old cousin and you kind of let them score a few baskets, but then you just ferociously block them once to tell them, like, you know, I'm way better than you. That was the equivalent of this finals. It was like, but it's like if on every play you just monstrously blocked a three-year-old, that's what Shaq was doing to Todd McCullough. It was like he was just dunking on him all the time, and the, the Nets had to sometimes, like, triple-team Shaq just to slightly neutralize him. So their finals opponent was very weak, so that's why I have them a little bit lower. Next, I have the 9 Lakers, who got a break here in that uh, the Celtics were not healthy this year, so they didn't have to face them. They also didn't have to face the 66-win Cavaliers either. They, Out of the three Eastern contenders, the Celtics, Magic, and Cavs, they probably got the team that was their best matchup and probably, like on paper, the worst team in the Magic, um, in that they had the worst record of the three, I believe, and they... Uh, the Magic themselves benefited from the Celtics not being healthy and that they were able to beat them in the second round. Um, so I think like the Lakers got a super favorable matchup in the finals and um, they benefited from the, their main competition, the Celtics, going through injury problems that year. Uh, 2008 Celtics, this is pretty, this is, I think this is the point where I'm going to start kind of transitioning from coming up with reasons why they're lower to coming up with reasons why they're higher. But still, this one last one I'll come up with, the Celtics are a little bit lower here, and you might say like, the 08 Celtics are the best, why are they so low? They struggled a lot in these playoffs against teams in the East that they should have, in my opinion, been having no troubles with. Um, so just going through the first three rounds of the East, they faced a 37-win Hawks team in the first round who took them to seven games. They then faced a 45-win Cavs team who took them to seven games. Remind you, this is a 66-win Celtics team who should be having no problem with A, a 37-win team, and B, a 45-win team. But collectively, they went 8-6 and six over the first two rounds versus those teams. Then Detroit was like a 52 or 50 win team and they took the Celtics to six games. So uh, again, the Celtics, and that one's a little bit more understandable. But then in the finals, the Celtics faced the Lakers who didn't even have Andrew Bynum, who was arguably their third best player. And the Lakers still took them to six, which um, seems like, all, to me, that series felt like it should have been... Um, like five games max, maybe even a sweep, because I think the Lakers had to start Chris Mim at that point, or if not, they were um, they were just really short on depth because Bynum was out, and he was averaging some, like, 13 and 10, and some pretty good, or decent defense going into that, so not having him, losing him right before the finals was a big deal for this team. Okay, 2010 Lakers, I put them above the 08 Celtics because they they faced the Celtics in 2010 in the finals and they beat them. Yes, Kendrick Perkins missed games seven and maybe six as well. No, he just missed game seven, but I don't think that was a huge factor in this finals. Um, I would actually argue this Celtics team was deeper 
Then the 08 team, they had Rashid Wallace on here. They had Nate Robinson on here. They had um, not Jermaine O'Neal yet, but they had still Big Baby Davis. They they had good depth. They also had um, somebody who I'm forgetting about off the bench who was pretty good. But regardless, um, this was a deeper Celtics team. And so the fact that the Lakers beat them, I think, speaks to the Lakers being higher up on the list. Also, they added Ron Artest, who I thought was a really good add to this team. Um, next I have the 2012 heat and the 2013 heat back to back. I can't really separate them cause I feel like they're, um, very similar teams. The only difference is that you add Ray Allen and Richard Lewis on the 2013 team. Um, yeah, overall, both very similar. The, the 2013 heat had more regular season wins. So I put them higher and they overall were just a little bit more talented with having Ray and Richard on that team. Uh, 2014 Spurs then next. I have them higher than the Heat because if you compare those back-to-back 2013-2014 finals, it was a Heat and Spurs rematch. And the Spurs collectively in those two series went 7-5 um, and five versus the Heat. They lost the first year in seven games and they won the second year in five games. So I believe that 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 shows the fact that they barely lost to the heat in 13 and then they pretty soundly beat them in 14, I think shows that that team overall is better. Um, Next I have the 2016 Cavaliers. Again, I think the Cavs are a team who uh, they faced really good competition in the finals and that they faced the Warriors who were 73 wins and, the Cavs just overall, they took care of the East really easily that year, and then they were really well rested for the Warriors, and they played some stellar defense and really physical defense versus them in the finals. And so, I they're up here sort of because they're what you'd call like a giant killer. Like they they beat a fantastic team in the finals, so you gotta put them pretty high up, I think. Next, I have in this order the 2001 Lakers and then the 2000 Lakers. I ranked 2000 above 2001 because although in 01, the Lakers went historically 15 and one in the playoffs, which is super impressive. uh, They had 11 less wins than the year prior in the 2000 season. The Lakers won 67 games and then in 01, they only won 56. So I think that's a substantial amount of wins, so I'm ranking the 2000 team higher. Also, I believe if the two teams played each other, that the 2000 team would win because they had uh, more options and that they had Glenn Rice on the team, and he was a really good third option for this team, whereas he left in free agency after 2000, and the team didn't really have that afterwards. They, They didn't have that third scoring option anymore because they had originally traded Eddie Jones for him, who was their third option, and then... Glenn Rice left in free agency, so they lacked that third option on offense after that. So that's, I think if the two teams played, 2,000 would win, so I put them higher. Then lastly, the top two spots, I have the 2018 Warriors, and then the top spot, I have the 2017 Warriors. Basically, on these two teams, you have two MVPs in your prime, along with two solid supporting all-stars. So I don't think you can really point to any team on here who had four prime all-stars on their team. Closest would be the, uh, let's see here, the 04 Pistons, but even that team, um, you know, that was a little bit before some of those guys even peaked. Like Chauncey was still kind of on the come up at that point, and so was Rip Hamilton. Um, that was like right before they peaked, I'd say. They were kind of peaking like 05, 06. Um, even Ben Wallace was like a year before his apex, so. They actually, technically on that team, I believe only Chauncey was an all-star that year. So technically, yeah, they're not even four all-stars on a team. But 17 Warriors, they won 67 games, and they went 16-1 and in the playoffs. So I put them at the top spot. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Leave your comments below, and I hope you have a good day. Bye.